Hello everyone. So welcome back. So we have been discussing about processor design and just to recap we have uh, divided the whole task or whole processing into five stages namely the instruction fetch followed by the opcode fetch uh, operand fetch then execution then memory access and finally the register write so these five stages uh, we have started looking into and we have extensively or we have looked uh, uh, already into the instruction fetch unit and the operand fetch unit. So now we will be moving ahead and looking into the execution unit alright. So if you remember uh, this was the last uh, slide or last diagram we have looked at in the uh, last class. So, where we said uh, we uh, explained that how the operand fetch unit gets the PC and the instruction details and uh, from the fetch unit and then the operand fetch unit primarily does two things basically there are two main blocks one is for immediate operations. So, it looks at whether the instruction has an immediate and accordingly it calculates um, those immediate values or if there is an offset uh, which will which will lead to a different uh, PC that part is taken care by this, uh, uh, this section of the operand fetch. The other section of the operand fetch is uh, dealing with the register operations and we know that there are uh, two source registers and if the source registers uh, uh, so we also have looked at that uh, rs1 and rs2 uh, are fed through a multiplexer why these multiplexers are there because uh, register register reading is not only limited to this rs1 and rs2 in the operand fetch stage you might have to read the return address register as well and to accommodate that we have this multiplexer which depending on this control signal which says that is the instruction a return instruction if it is so then in the op operand fetch unit you should read what is stored in the return address register and that content of this return address register will be basically uh, out uh, will be available as the output op1 from the operand stage similarly there might be a situation where you have a stored instruction now we know because of the uniqueness of this stored instruction the value which we need to store we generally we, we store it in the rd register now um, if if the instruction which we are dealing with is a stored instruction then we might need to uh, basically we have to read the rd register which is the uh, which is in general we are uh, familiar with destination register where basically you store something or you store the output or you update the output as the name destination suggests, but it is a unique thing in case of store. In case of stored instruction, we use this RD field of the instruction for basically uh, storing the address of the register where uh, which value uh, whose value we will need to store in a in the memory. So, that is why if the instruction is stored, then we will be uh, we will be reading this RD. Uh, uh, the content of the RD field which will indicate um, which will uh, basically point to the register where uh, whose value need to be stored and the value will be available in the OP2 outcome alright. So, I hope this part is uh, clear uh, if you have any questions please feel free to ask because this is important. Alright, so now this 
operand fetch unit what all it is giving us? It is giving us uh, this possible four outcomes, uh, the immediate values, the branch target, the OP1 and OP2. Now, we also have said that just uh, to make things simple and also to achieve performance, these things are evaluated in parallel. So, as soon as you get the instruction, you start doing this operations in parallel, so that you do not have to wait to decode that whether this instruction has an immediate value and I have to calculate uh, this uh, immediate value or I have to calculate the branch target value. Irrespective of that, you go ahead and calculate these values and if these are not actually uh, uh, the instruction does not have an immediate value or it is not a branch instruction, then this will be an extra unnecessary work, but still uh, it is much much easier to deal with uh, or it is it is still ok uh, to do this extra work and be ready with the results. So, that you do not have any performance penalty when you need to calculate them. Otherwise, basically you have to have some kind of a decoding mechanism which will tell you that ok this is an immediate uh, and you perform now the immediate operation. This is a branch and do this branch instruction. So, remember this is a operand fetch unit. So, as the name suggests it its job is to fetch all the possible operands. Now, the possible operands can be an immediate value, can be a branch target, can be your regular operand values. So, the in the operand fetch unit you calculate all of them and be ready with it and send it to the execution unit. So, that execution unit depending on what is what is required it can uh, work on them all right ok. So, we will move ahead and now we will be uh, uh, just to uh, just to make sure that we remember this diagram. So, we have discussed about the instruction fetch unit, we have discussed the operand fetch right now um, and now we are moving to the execute stage all right. Now, if you if you uh, just before we move to execute stage, you look at the input to the execute stage from the operand fetch unit. So, these are the immediate values, branch target and the operand values all right ok. Now, we will uh, start with the uh, in the ALU, we will start with the branch unit part. Now, in the execution unit, we have to generate this uh, outcome which says this is branch taken. So, remember that uh, in the in the instruction fetch unit, I will just try to show you that um, actually we, we said that we need an input uh, which says that is branch taken. So, this is our instruction fetch unit. Here we had an input signal which is a control signal which is basically is branch taken. Now, who generates of course, the control unit generates that signal, but uh, that to generate that signal you need certain uh, flags to be read, uh, because if there is a conditional branch uh, then those flags uh, those comparisons etcetera will be done in the execution unit. So, we will start with that. So, we know that there is a flags register and in the flags register if the comparison output is equal like if you are comparing A and B and the outcome is equal, then you know that flex dot E is uh, set. Now, the next uh, basically what all condition you will check to, to make sure that uh, whether this branch is branch taken signal will be uh, high or not. So, you will you will check the flag status you will also check is this instruction a branch if equal instruction and you will end this. If the outcome of this AND gate is high that means, both these conditions are true. Uh, the, the instruction is a branch if equal instruction and also the flags dot equal is set. So, then you will 
basically have a high value here and you will put it uh, as one of the inputs to the OR gate whose outcome is basically is branch taken. So, if this condition if this is high then the OR gate output will be high. Similarly, you will also check uh, the flags dot gt flag basically greater than flag and uh, similarly you will check whether the instruction is a branch if greater than if both these conditions are true then you will give a high output or true output and accordingly the OR gate output will be high. The third situation can be if there is an unconditional branch. So, if there is an unconditional branch you will directly give a high out input to the OR gate. Now, if this any of this condition is true then the is branch taken signal will be high all right. So, in your ALU the flags flags get updated and these conditions uh, are basi basically according to the, the status of the flag these conditions are checked and accordingly is branch taken is uh, uh, a, a signal is generated all right. Now, also in the execution stage the uh, the actual out uh, basically updated PC is calculated. Now, uh, there can be two conditions if it is a return address if this is a basically if this is a return um, instruction then the the branch PC will be or from where the next instruction has to be fetched will be dependent on the return address register. Now, where this return address register uh, is, is evaluated. So, you remember that in the off code fetch we just mentioned that if this is a return address then this uh, basically th if this is a return instruction then this return address is available or RA uh, output return address register output is available as OP1. So, this OP1 is one of the input to this multiplexer and when this will be uh, uh, this OP1 will be selected when uh, this is a return address and accordingly your branch uh, branch PC will be updated. Now, if this is not the case if it is not a return address then the branch target address you are getting it from the uh, basically operand fetch unit. So, this target address is selected and that is how you update your PC all right. So, this is one of the uh, one of the task which is performed in the ALU. I hope this makes sense. What are the uh, the main task uh, or uh, basically uh, the arithmetic operations arithmetic and logic operations uh, are done in the ALU. So, the other uh, the, the task is done in this way. So, you have this arithmetic and logic unit and uh, now your first operand for the arithmetic and logic unit. So, this A and B are the two operands which will be which are input to the arithmetic and logic unit. Now, the first operand comes from uh, we know that it is a basically ours is a uh, simple risk ISA where the first operand is always a register. So, this first operand comes from here and basically it directly comes there. The second opponent can be an immediate or an or a, or coming from the register. So, accordingly we have this marks. Now, if the select line uh, to this mask, um, um, uh, so what is the select line? The select line is the immediate bit in our instruction. So, if the immediate bit is high then we select this immediate input uh, uh, basically as, as operand which again where is it generated? It is generated in the operand fetch uh, unit right. So, we generated from our uh, 18 bit immediate value where uh, 2 bits were basically the modifiers we generate the 32 bit immediate uh, outcome. Uh, 
so i hope in this part you guys remember now if this uh, immediate value is high then we select uh, this immediate opponent if this is low then we select the op2 which is the <coughs> which is the resistor outcome all right and then depending on what kind of alu operation we need to do uh, that uh, will be given by a control signal which is called alu signals uh, there can be multiple alu signals we will we'll talk about it in the next uh, in the next diagram and depending on that we will get the alu result all right so this is at the top level how the alu unit looks like so first operand is your uh, resistor second operand is based on the value uh, value of the immediate bit it can be either um, immediate or an operand uh, operand coming from resistor okay so now let's look at the uh, what is there inside the alu okay now inside the alu there are uh, as we can imagine there can be uh, multiple units doing different tasks um, so obviously there will be an adder which uh, can uh, add to numbers so the operands are basically uh, a and b now if it is add then it's fine uh, you need to do the additional oper addition operation and the add uh, the outcome of this add is fed to this um, uh, this marks where the uh, basically output will be alu result depending on which uh, which of these input has to be selected depending on again some control signal now the uh, there can be load stored instruction as well where you need to calculate the address for example if you remember we talked about uh, base offset addressing for our load store instructions where the uh, addresses were mentioned by some offset and some base now to find out the actual address for either load or store you need to do some uh, arithmetics so basically you have to add the base uh, with the offset to get the actual address now this addition also needs to be done in using this adder only so basically to employ the adder you will see uh, basically if there is if it is an add instruction or if it is a load store instruction where the offset and the base need to be added to find out the actual address you will use that now that's fine uh, uh, so our adder uh, can handle all this different situation how about subtract now we know that uh, for uh, performing uh, the uh, subtract operation you need to represent the uh, so you can you can very easily do it if you uh, if you represent the number which need to be subtracted in two's complement form and then if you do addition actually the result is uh, you get the result of subtraction so here if the instruction is subtraction you need a small logic which will be uh, which will be converting this uh, number which or uh, the operand which need to be subtracted into a two's complement representation and then you will uh, perform addition and the result will be again passed on all right you can have uh, uh, the comparison so what is comparison comparison is nothing but uh, again subtraction you uh, subtract uh, b from a and if the result is zero then you know that the the two numbers are equal if a greater than b then you get a positive number and accordingly you uh, you create uh, you basically update or you uh, set or reset the flags which are uh, basically the flags dot e or flags dot gt all right so these multiple functions are done using adder okay then you have the multiplier so you can um, uh, it it is again uh, uh, does only multiplication so if the uh, if you are 
intended to, to intended to do multiplication then you if this signal will be high the operands are given and you have a dedicated hardware which does the multiplication similarly for division now for division you can have uh, two situation where basically you are interested into the uh, into the uh, mentisa of your uh, or basically um, uh, you are uh, sorry you are interested in the quotient value so in that case uh, you will uh, you will use this uh, uh, signal where you are only interested in the division and you will be uh, getting the quotient as outcome if you are interested in the remainder so then you will be using this uh, control signal where you will be actually doing the mod operation. So, A mod B, so the remainder will be given as the output ALU result. Okay. Uh, the other things uh, which are done in this ALU are basically your shift uh, uh, different kind of shift operations. Uh, so, basically the logical shift operation. Uh, then um, uh, shift left, shift right and uh, the arithmetic shift operations and uh, uh, this is done in this unit. The logical unit does all the logical operations like or, not and etcetera depending on what logical operation you are doing you may or may not need both the operands. And similarly you have the move uh, instruction which will be uh, uh, which is also uh, taken care at the ALU level. All right. So, these are the different instructions which are implemented in the ALU. All right. Uh, so, if we look at the uh, execution unit uh, in totality looks like this. So, we have the uh, basically condition checking uh, checking for branch and the branch outcome uh, basically the address where you need to branch the ALU or arithmetic and logic unit uh, gets the operands uh, 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 operands can be uh, basically directly coming from registers or one uh, operand can be an immediate value and then the arithmetic and logic unit does this uh, uh, whatever needs to be done depending on the ALU signal. Accordingly, it updates the flags and that updated flag is used for finding out whether the branch is taken or not and then you get the ALU result. All right. So, I hope uh, this makes sense. All right. So, let me move ahead. Uh, so, just to remind you that we are now done with the execution unit as well, we will now move to the memory access unit. So, execution unit output is basically the ALU result which goes to the uh, next stage. All right. So, this is your uh, memory access unit. So, now the memory access unit depending on uh, what instruction it is dealing with. So, we know memory access unit is uh, meant to meant for dealing with load stored instructions. So, let us uh, start with the load instruction first. So, uh, if we if we look into load instruction, so we know that for load, so we are looking at load. All right. So, for load instruction, what all you need? Uh, we need the okay. So for load instruction, we need a um, so for the load instruction, we need the address. So the address from uh, basically where in uh, where from in the memory we have to load the value. So, where is the address coming from? 
the address as we mentioned earlier is generally a base uh, you have this uh, uh, base register and the offset value which need to be added to get the uh, address and that address comes from your uh, ALU all right. So, the value which you need to uh, uh, or the, the, the location from where you need to load the value that address comes from your ALU. Okay. So, this is where the ALU address uh, uh, basically ALU uh, provides the address. It is stored in a uh, temporary uh, register uh, here in the memory unit and uh, depending on that address the data is fetched from um, this data memory and this ad, uh, basically this data is then directly uh, passed on to uh, as the output of your load address. Okay. So, this is what happens in the load instruction. So, uh, just to recap, so load instruction we typically have let us say load R1 with let us say some base address and uh, uh, basically some offset and some base address. So, this this base plus offset evaluation is done in the ALU and that results in the uh, basically that is stored in the ALU result and comes to this memory access unit uh, uh, as outcome of the ALU. And this address is then um, uh, sent to the memory unit, memory unit uh, then accesses that particular address in the data memory and the content of that address is then comes out and basically uh, uh, we get the output as load result uh, from this memory access um, uh, memory access unit all right so this is how the load instruction uh, is executed okay now how about store now in case of store uh, so let me in case of store. So, we will have um, instructions like um, let us say store. Now, here we are talking about content of this register let us say and uh, where we should store it let us say again the address will be uh, denoted by some base offset uh, uh, strategy. Uh, so, basically this is the base address and this is the offset value. So, this address calculation again will be done by ALU. So, I will get the actual address as ALU result. Now, this basically uh, the value which need to be stored, it is stored in, uh, it is there in R2. Now, R2 is read in the operand fetch stage. So, I will just uh, uh, show it uh, once more what is happening in the operand fetch stage. In the operand fetch stage, if the instruction is stored, then <coughs> this uh, RD field is read and that uh, content of this RD uh, register is basically outputted through OP2. Now, this OP2 comes here in the memory access unit. So, this is the content of R2 all right. So, content of R2 is available in OP2. So, what will happen since it is a store address? So, we will get the address where you need to store and we will get the content what need to be stored. So, the ALU result will tell me in the data memory where I have to store and what I have to store is stored here and that value will be stored here. So, in the in the uh, stored instruction there is no out, output. So, the, the ALU result tells me where in the data memory I have to store it and the value actually comes from OP2 and that value is stored in this location. 
all right so this is um, i hope this uh, makes sense so this is what our memory unit is and um, okay so uh, these are two temporary register ad memory address register and memory data uh, register so the data that need to be stored and the address where it need to be stored these are denoted by these temporary registers and uh, you have control signals like whether it's a load instruction or it's a store instruction and depending on that you will be uh, reading ap ap uh, appropriate values for example if it is a uh, load instruction then you will be just reading the address and then uh, uh, the content will be retrieved and that will come out as the load result and if it is a stored instruction then uh, we will figure out the address we will also uh, read the content from op2 and that will be stored in this memory <coughs> All right. So, now uh, we are just left with one more unit and that is our uh, register write unit, register write back unit. Okay. So, we have already seen this part of the uh, register file and accessing the register file uh, or uh, reading the register file in the operand fetch uh, stage. So, there in the operand fetch stage, if you remember, <coughs> we did not care about uh, uh, care much about whether we are reading the appropriate value or not. Uh, for example, we said that uh, uh, even before we decode, we read these values and we, uh, we uh, the, the, out, uh, the register outputs are available in OP1 and OP2. Because see, even if we do some uh, extra reading, it is not a problem. So, that is why we uh, just went ahead and read those values. Now, uh, for writing, this is not true. You cannot just arbitrarily write anything because uh, once you have uh, written something, that means you have erased the previous value and written on top of it. So, if that writing is not proper, then it will create uh, error and you will not be able to rectify that. So, that is why uh, it is it is very important to uh, make sure that whatever you are writing is uh, something valid all right. And that is why you will see that now you will be talking about the writing this register file for writing there is a enable pin. So, before you write, you have to always check whether the write back is required or do you need to write anything on the register file. If that signal, this, this control signal is not there, then you will not be able to write. Now, once that is settled that okay, you need to write, now you can uh, basically depending on the situation, you might need to write. Uh, like what you will write and where you will write. So, to answer that there can be broadly two situations, one is uh, like you will write the destination register. So, in our instruction set uh, we have uh, in, in our instruction we have a field for destination register namely the uh, bits from 26 to 23 are uh, denoting your destination register. Now, that can be one uh, possibility where you would like to write the uh, or update the registers. There can be one other possibility which is the return address register. Now, if you have a call instruction, so we, we discussed this several times. So, whenever I have a call instruction, what we will do? We will before we try to serve the uh, uh, service routine, we will be first uh, we before that we will be updating our return address in the return address register right so depending on these two scenarios like if it can be a call instruction or it can be a uh, uh, another instruction which updates your destination register depending on that you will select either of them 
if it is a call instruction you will select the return address register and return address register uh, address will be uh, fed into the write port which will tell that this is the register which I want to update. Now, with what I want to update that will come from here uh, from the data. <coughs> Similarly, it can be the destination register. So, the destination register depending on your instruction can be any of the general purpose registers and you will give this address. And uh, so, remember we are dealing with uh, 16 bit register. So, this will be 4 bit and this address uh, lines will be 4 bit. Now, what where from the data will come? The data can come uh, which you need to update the data can come from several uh, uh, at least three different uh, options. So, it can be your ALU result. So, uh, you are updating uh, some uh, destination registers let us say uh, as part of arithmetic operation or some logical operations. So, the result comes as ALU result. So, that can be one option. The result can be also an outcome of a load instruction. So, for example, uh, you uh, we have just seen the last uh, unit uh, in case of a load basically we load the value from memory and that result is available in the load result right. Now, generally what we do we would like to load the value into a general purpose register. So, we give so for example, in this instruction we wanted to load the content of this address into this register. So, we have um, the address and then from that we have already got the value which we need to load. Now, now we have to load this value into R 1. <coughs> so, this is where the load result is available and the uh, for the load instruction here destination is R 1. So, destination value will come as R 1 here and you will be updating the uh, load result into the R 1 uh, when you execute this load instruction alright. So, load can be another uh, possibility of getting the value. The third possibility is uh, basically if it is a call instruction and you are calculating the uh, content of return address. So, how do you calculate the content of return address? Basically, you have your current PC, you add uh, 4 with it to, to, to point towards the next instruction that need to be executed and uh, that is how you get your 32 bit address. And if it is a call instruction, then this will be the data which in which you need to uh, load into your return address register all right. So, this is very very important to understand that um, the address and data are two different things. So, return address uh, uh, I want to update the return address register that is fine. So, I can I can find out where my return address register is in the register file using my 4 bit uh, address for the for the resist for the register specific register. Now, this register is 32 bit what should I store inside this register that is basically the PC where uh, uh, the next instruction or the uh, basically uh, after the after the subroutine uh, is executed the address where you have to come back. Now, what is that address? The address is nothing but the current PC plus 4 that will uh, that will give me the next instruction address and that is where I should come back after servicing that uh, 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 subroutine and that is why we are generating this uh, address by adding 4 with the current PC and storing it into the return address register. Now, we see that there are three options from where the uh, data that need to be written into the register file can be uh, stored. So, to, to select among these three options uh, we have now uh, we, we need two select lines. Uh, so, the 
control signals which we uh, need to use here are basically if both these signals are low uh, then basically uh, if it if it is not a load instruction or it is not a call instruction then the data we will get from the alu output if it is a load instruction and it's not a call instruction so basically uh, then this will be selected and the result will will be getting from the uh, load result and if it is a call instruction and it is not a load instruction then th basically we will uh, uh, update the return address register with PC plus 4 alright. So, I hope this uh, is uh, absolutely clear. <coughs> So, uh, we have discussed all the different stages, uh, of course, uh, this uh, are uh, this looks little, um, uh, but if you look at uh, look at individually each of these modules, I think this is absolutely clear how these individual modules work and uh, basically what kind of signals you need to make them work etcetera. This is a figure where all the different modules are put together, you do not have to uh, basically worry too much, you can uh, closely look into it, you will see that this is your instruction fetch unit, um, then you will have <coughs> your uh, operand fetch unit, so this is the register files and this is where your operands are fetched, then you have your ALU memory stage and uh, then uh, basically you will also have the uh, uh, the uh, register updation or register write stage which is basically signals are generated here and so these are the three different options which you can select and the data is fed here and uh, which is the destination register that is coming from here and you, you update this. So, it looks a uh, little complicated, but if you look closely you will see that it is it's nothing but combining everything together. Now, we have a big unit here which is uh, marked as control unit which is generating all these different uh, control signals and uh, our objective is to make sure that uh, 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 these control signals and these control signals are making sure that all the data are flowing as uh, they are expected to uh, uh, flow. So, they are controlling the flow of data. <coughs> So, very briefly we will now look into the control unit and uh, uh, you will see that um, it is not very uh, complex, uh, uh, we need to we have already seen what are the control signals we will need to make this process processor work properly. So, uh, we will just see how these control signals can be generated. Uh, remember that control signal control unit has those 6 bits as input. 5 bits for the opcode and 1 bit for the immediate. Uh, so, depending on these 6 bits, the control signal will generate all this control, uh, control unit will generate all the control signals. And uh, we are talking about hardware control unit, um, uh, there is another, uh, another way of implementing this control unit which is called microprogrammed control unit. We will not talk about it in this course uh, because uh, hardware control unit are the more popular ones and uh, it also provides you better performance. So, uh, the hardware control unit has uh, this uh, in, as input it has this uh, uh, 5 bits uh, of code and 1 bit of uh, the, uh, the immediate bit and then it has all the bunch of control signals which we have um, uh, which we have seen. So, what are the different control signals it generates? Uh, if we list it out uh, you will see that uh, is it a stored instruction, load instruction, branch, uh, is it a branch if equal instruction. So, all these kind of instructions. So, that you can very easily uh, decode uh, by looking at the opcode that if, if it is a stored instruction or a load or branch if equal branch greater than or it is a return address is the immediate bet uh, high. Now, whether there will be a write back, so any register will get updated or not that depends 
on uh, uh, basically what instruction you are dealing with. So, a lot a lot of instruction actually updates the uh, destination register. So, accordingly this uh, is right back uh, uh, signal is there a right back this signal will be little complicated. So, you have to look at all the conditions where uh, you will you will need uh, uh, you will be writing back and accordingly the condition has to be generated. Similarly, is there a branch uh, is it a branch instruction. So, we know already that uh, it can be decoded very easily is there a call instruction and so on and uh, then there are other uh, uh, control signals like uh, uh, for example, is this uh, so these are mostly LU signals. Uh, is it an add instruction, subtract, compare, multiply, division, mod, uh, shift operations uh, or and move etcetera. So, these are the different control signals and uh, the hardware control is not very difficult to generate if you look at the uh, way it is getting generated. So, you remember that uh, the way these control signals are generated are these 5 bits right. Uh, so, these 5 bits of your opcode and the immediate bit and you have to just see like for uh, depending on the way the different instructions are encoded, what is the condition you have to make sure that uh, basically what is what are the condition or uh, a combinational circuit which will generate the appropriate um, logic to generate these signals. Uh, so, the book uh, uh, basically lists all the conditions and you will uh, for simple risk and you will see that when you look at the conditions it, it uh, is not at all um, very difficult to uh, difficult to see how uh, this control signals can be generated all right. So, uh, this is what uh, we wanted to start with the discussion on processor design. Uh, and this control unit is hardware control unit. So, basically depending on the, the those 5 bits and the immediate bit you are generating some control signals using combinational logic and these are uh, implemented on hardware. The other possibility which uh, is also sometimes uh, uh, you will see is called microprogrammed control unit. So, the control unit is not implemented on hardware, it is kind of a microprogrammed. So, what does that mean? It means that uh, basically you, uh, you have uh, the control unit which is uh, more which gives lot more visibility to the programmer. For example, let us say uh, we have seen the ISA uh, allows us to add two numbers. So, if I want to add two numbers, I will write add uh, uh, all the three operands basically destination followed by two source sources. Now, in case of a microprogram uh, control unit, so in case of hardware control unit, if uh, this is how your control unit is implemented on hardware, you will not be able to do any changes there. But, if you have a uh, microprogrammed control unit, so what you can do? You can uh, uh, basically uh, for, for some reason let us say you need to add 3 numbers. So, now you can write an instruction which says that uh, uh, or micro code, uh, microprogrammed instruction which says that add uh, a destination followed by 3 operands. Now, when you write this instruction, uh, the microprogrammed control unit, it will decode if it, ha it has the capability, it will decode that okay, you want to do addition and internally it will, it will know that okay, my micro architecture or actual hardware can perform only two or handle two operands. So, what it will do? It will break it into uh, multiple uh, smaller micro instructions, so that they can be executed in the hardware, but as a programmer you will have the flexibility to write a instruction where you will say that uh, okay, I will I'll add 3 numbers in one instruction. Uh, similarly, you can you can uh, you can add complexity to your uh, program 
uh, and how you do that basically you uh, as, as a programmer you get to uh, you get uh, some intermediate uh, uh, layer uh, where your complicated programs are converted into micro instructions basically your one micro programmed instruction is translated into multiple micro instructions which ultimately gets executed in the hardware. So, this translation is done by something called firmware. So, you might have heard about this term. Uh, so, it is basically in between your software and hardware. So, your hardware can only let us say understand the micro instructions. Now, uh, you, at, at high level you are writing this micro programmed instructions which are basically nothing but uh, 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 a, a little higher level instruction which need to be translated into smaller uh, micro instructions and that translation work is done by the uh, by your uh, uh, this uh, firmware. Uh, so, this has this uh, the, the advantage of having micro programmed control unit is that um, uh, the programmer has the flexibility to write uh, more complex instructions. Let us say uh, I am just giving you some uh, some example, it may be little exaggerated. Let us say I want I need to do factorial a lot many times in my instruction or let us say. Uh, a very extreme example can be let us say fast Fourier transform or some some this kind of uh, uh, things or MAC operation multiply and accumulate. This kind of instructions you need to do uh, very frequently in your in your uh, application and you really uh, while you need to write the program every time you need to do let us say multiply and accumulate. Uh, uh, if your ISA does not support that, then you have to do multiply, then accumulate, and you have to do it uh, in, in uh, your, your all the instructions has to be spelled out very clearly. And every time you need to do this operation, you have to repeat it. Now, if you have a microprogrammed control unit, uh, then you might define that frequently used um, uh, instruction, like let us say multiply and accumulate, as a single instruction. And every time you need to do it, you just write a single instruction. Now, the micro program uh, or the firmware basically translates it into, uh, uh, into multiple micro uh, instructions which the hardware gets and then hardware performs it. So, that way the life of programmer or the uh, program looks uh, simple, easy to understand and uh, easy to write. But your hardware uh, needs to do the same work, but because of this translation and this generic nature of uh, the implementation, uh, basically you will be looking at um, or you will be trying to uh, in the in the micro programmed uh, uh, control unit, you will try to keep it as generic as possible, so that you can accommodate more and more instruction and in that process you. Uh, basically add lot uh, of a uh, lot of extra additional things and as a result if you compare the performance you will see that the hardware control unit performs much much better than the micro programmed uh, control unit and that is why micro programmed control unit are only uh, basically for all high performance uh, applications or uh, wherever you need efficiency you go for hardware control unit and uh, and uh, we will we will uh, also discuss about hardware control unit going uh, in our subsequent lectures also all right so now we have uh, seen how we can design our processor uh, we have looked at all the stages their implementation the control unit etc right now we will further look into how we can improve the performance of this processor using pipeline. So, pipeline is the next thing we will be talking about. All right.